videos. Hi folks, and welcome to Open Analysis Live. So this is a quick video. We're back from DEF CON and we're starting to make videos again and work on our special project. So you should stay tuned for a couple more uh, longer form videos that will be coming soon. But this one is just a quick tip, um, sort of refreshing an older video that we did on VB6 Packers. So a friend of mine was having some trouble with this sample and he said he was following our tutorial and he couldn't quite get it. Uh, he just wanted some pointers on what to do. And and uh, I thought this would be a good opportunity just to take a you know, couple minute video uh, to refresh anyone in case anyone else was having the same sort of difficulty that he was. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a Remco sample today that is packed with VB6. And uh, I'll link to our other video in the description of this video below where we talk about VB6 packers. Um, in that case, we actually used IDA to unpack it. So in this case, we're going to use X64 debug. It's a little bit faster, um, but the same principles apply. So just a little refresher. VB6 is an interpreted language, uh, much like Java. The, you know, you have the JVM, a virtual machine that is interpreting the Java bytecode. So for VB6, uh, you have a VB6 virtual machine uh, that is interpreting P code, uh, which is an intermediate language. And you can see this if you were to open up one of these files in IDA, you would see that there is no x86 assembly in there. There's really very little, it's just a little stub. Um, and it's all this kind of garbage code <laughs> that you can't really read. You need a special decompiler for it. Now there are decompilers out there, um, but usually VB6, it's very old. It's usually only used for packing. It's not usually used for malware. And in the rare case that it is used for malware, uh, it's unfortunate you're gonna have a bit of work on your hands. But luckily this in this case, it is just a packer. So uh, I'm going to show you how to sort of circumvent this. So you don't have to look at the uh, VB6 code at all. And uh, we're actually going to use our one breakpoint trick because this does do uh, process injection. So they are doing, uh, they're creating a process and they're going to inject into it. So much like our other quick tip unpacking videos, we're going to start out with a breakpoint on a create process internal. And once we hit that, we're just gonna let the PE run. We're gonna set that breakpoint, let it run. Uh, once we hit that breakpoint, we are then going to search in memory for a PE file, an executable that has been unpacked in memory and is ready to be written into the newly created process. So this is what we call like a dump point. And uh, it's always good to have a certain set of dump points that you use um, where you know if you stop in that breakpoint, you can look for a PE file in memory. Now, the big trick here is that in most of our other videos, we like to use dump points on virtual alloc. So what we do is we put a breakpoint on the return from virtual alloc, then we follow the newly allocated memory in our dump, we run a little bit, and we look and see if a PE file has been written into that newly allocated memory. So that's the majority of our unpacking videos. This one's a bit different though. So because they're using VB6, VB6, like I said, is a virtual machine and it's interpreting P code and spitting out x86 assembly that's run uh, dynamically. So what that means is they are allocating and freeing a lot of memory. So if we were to try and use our trick of putting a breakpoint on virtual alloc, we would see that that breakpoint is just hit repeatedly again and again and again. And you kind of just get a overflow, you know, a fire hose of breakpoints and it's not worth trying to figure out which which one is going to have a P file in it, which one is just allocated for uh, the virtual machine. You could maybe do some scripting for this, uh, you know, check the size of the allocated memory and whatever, but you don't need to because there's a trick here. So like I said, the trick is to use a different dump point, and in this case that's going to be the breakpoint on create process internal. So without further ado, uh, let's get unpacking. So here if we jump over to our VM, let me drag this over into PE Bear and uh, take a look at the imports. And here you can see that the it only the PE file only has one import, and that's uh, MS, msvbvm60 uh, or 60. And so that tells me that this is uh, Visual Basic 6, VB6. Um, so this is how you can tell very quickly whether the PE file is VB6 because it will only have one import, and it's going to be the VM DLL, uh, this Microsoft uh, DLL. So now that we got that out of the way, uh, let's open it up in the debugger and we'll use our trick here. Okay, so the first thing we do is put that breakpoint on create process internal W and, uh, and then we just run the binary. So of course we hit the breakpoint on the entry point, which is always set, just run past that. Now we hit an exception, which is kind of interesting. Um, now, this exception could be a bunch of different things. Could just be some sort of issue with the uh, 
uh, with VB6 where they have an exception handler for it, uh, or maybe it's some anti-debugging trick where they expect, uh, where they check to see whether the exception has been intercepted by a debugger, and if it has, they exit out. But in both those cases, uh, we don't have to do anything. All we do is we just choose the advanced run option here, uh, and we choose pass the exception to the process. And all this does is this uh, passes the exception to the process as if there was no debugger running. So whatever would normally happen at runtime happens. The reason why we do this is because this is what would happen if you were just running the process normally, like they would expect. So that's why we wanna sort of mimic that behavior. And you can see when we do that, it runs fine, there's no crash, and then boom, we hit our uh, create process internal W breakpoint. So now what we want to do is we want to go over to our memory map and we want to do a find pattern and look for a string that is going to occur in the P file header. Now, if you guys have looked at a P file, which I'm sure you have, or at least you've seen our videos, we look at them a lot. Uh, there's a string that is usually there that says something like this process cannot be run in DOS or something like that. There's some version of these. There's a bunch of different strings uh, that pop up for different reasons. Now what that is, that's actually a DOS header. That's a mini DOS program um, that is uh, part of the P structure. Uh, I won't go into that too much, but basically that string is usually there. Uh, now there are some anti-debugging methods uh, where they wipe that string out so it's hard to find the PE file using this technique. But in this case, we get lucky, as you guys will see. Um, so we just search for uh, this process, uh, Just that's just part of the string, and uh, we search in memory for it here. It's going to take a minute, and then we can see there's a bunch of hits here. Now, this is exactly what we would expect. We would expect that every Microsoft DLL, that's all those DLLs that are loaded at the 7.5 address, um, those are all going to have a PE header. We would expect that uh, the PE file that we're running, the malware, the packed malware is going to have that header. Obviously it's a PE file. Uh, so that's probably gonna be in the four something range. And then there's probably gonna be a few other ones that uh, we're gonna have to check out. So I'm gonna show you here. Uh, let's take a look at the first one, just right click full and dump. And then once we follow it in dump, we can confirm that it is a PE file. So we can see that little MZ, right click follow in memory map. And then we look at what it is. So here we can see that this is actually a uh, loaded file from disk. Uh, and so you can see the loaded uh, string path there. So we don't have to care about this. This is not a in-memory PE file. This is mapped from disk and there's a path there. So it's not the one we're looking for. Now we look at the next one here, uh, which is loaded at four and something. So that's probably our own PE file. And if we look, yeah, it is. That's our packed PE file. So we don't care about that one. Let's look at the next one. Follow and dump, and then follow that dump in the memory map. Ooh, this looks juicy. So look at that. There's no MZ there, but there is that DOS string. And if we follow the memory map, there we go. This looks pretty good, right? So we have an uh, execute read write section. Uh, it's not linked to a PE file, but it has a PE file header in it. So let's dump that out to our desktop here and we'll take a look at it in a hex editor. So load that file up and uh, let's find that this program string again, because that's where the start of the P file is. So we'll search for that. There we go, we found it. Now, what we can do here is we can just delete all of the data that is in that memory section that occurs before the beginning of the PE file. Now, this is a trick that I have learned because I have some uh, experience looking at PE files, so it's easy for me to see what's going on, but I'll explain for you guys um, what I'm doing here. So I noticed that there is no MZ, so you guys know that PE files always start with the two bytes MZ, and there is none here. It's probably been wiped as an anti-analysis feature, so it's probably some sort of uh, anti-analysis trick that they use where they wipe that out, so I can't find it in memory, but they left the DOS string in here that uh, this program cannot be run in DOS in DOS mode. Now, if you look at the bytes before that, you'll see the FF and then a couple bytes and 04, blah, 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 and then 09, and then the two null bytes, right where the cursor is there. Now, this looks like the first row of bytes in a P header. Now, I just know that because that's the pattern that it looks like. Um, obviously, I wouldn't expect everyone to know that, but what you can do is you can see that this um, beginning of this line aligns with the uh, offset of the hex dump. So you can see that the, you know, the MZ, where, where the MZ would be is at the beginning of the hex dump line here. Now, that's important because it usually will be aligned. Um, 
And the other thing is you can see that that's the first line that doesn't have zeros on it. So you can see all lines before that are all zeros. Then this line actually has a few care, a few bytes in it that are non-zero. So if I just had to randomly guess, if I saw that DOS string and I had to randomly guess where does the MZ start, I would just kind of go line by line up until I found the last line that had some data on it before a big chunk of zeros. Doesn't always work, but you know these are tricks that you can use that might work, and they don't cost you much, right? So I'll show you here. It takes five seconds to basically uh, clear off the data, add an MZ, and then check to see whether it's valid. So let's clear this data off. We'll just select it all and delete it and add the MZ here. So we'll just put our cursor in the text box, MZ, and save that file out. So now we want to check to make sure it's a valid file. Best way to do this is to open it in PE Bear. Make sure that the sections align with the actual data, uh, section data, and make sure that the imports are valid. So if both those are true, then you probably have yourself a nice unpacked file. So look at the section headers. That looks good. If you click on it, there's definitely data there. Look at the imports, all good, all resolved. There we go, we've unpacked Ramcos. So that's all there is to it. Um, one breakpoint, hunt for the P file in memory. Some of it might be corrupted, but you can kind of recover it, especially if they've just knocked out the MZ uh, signature. And once you uh, have recovered it, just double check that it's valid in PE Bear and uh, then you're good to go. So in the description of the video below, I have links to Malshare so you can download the pack sample and you can download the unpack sample to sort of compare your results. Uh, so I encourage you guys to try this out. It's a super easy way to uh, get started with debugging, get started with uh, unpacking. And hopefully this helps you if you uh, ever find yourself unpacking a VV6 packer. Uh, it's not as daunting as it might look <laughs> on first pass. So we'll see you soon with a longer format video, a little bit more in depth, hopefully next time. And uh, until then, keep exposing the mechanics behind the malware. Stay curious.